Hello everybody, this is Dream Gamer back for another Jurassic World Evolution 2 video mega park build. And yeah, a lot of you really like the uh, Amphicelus Amphitheater Arena thingy that I built in uh, part 1. So I am back with another spectacular build in time lapse. My bobbidi -bobbidi 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 -bobbidi. But this time, we're going a little bit more natural because I am building a little walkthrough area here. Well, I say little, it's quite big. <laughs> yeah, I have the idea of building like a nature trail. So you see those nature trails, you like walk through the forest and such, and you see like animals and that. Yeah, something similar to that, but with dinosaurs, because you know, it's Jurassic World. <laughs> yeah, you can see the bridge I'm building here. I think, I think it qualifies for a bridge. It does look nice, except for this path bit by here, which I do fix off camera, I believe. I only put this time lapse together yesterday, and I've forgotten, and I've forgotten what I did in it. Not, not much to say here, to be honest. I'm just toning out the outside for the beginning. And yeah, I do have these uh, waterfalls now, which is awesome. The waterfall mod, a shout out to, I can't remember your name, sir, but... Yeah, you get a shout out. Yeah, these waterfalls, they look really nice. I think they look really nice. Now, there is a little bit of a tip a tip with them. If you, um, because when I put them together, I notice that sometimes the water would flow up in the wrong direction. But if you, like, rotate the waterfall, it'll flow back down. So it's like a, the actual waterfall itself is like an arch and the water is going in one direction. So you have to, like, get it in the right direction. And you have like the splash effects as you can see there on that waterfall. Yeah, I think I think they look pretty nice. Very, very well done. Right, and I am building the outside at the minute. I think I make it a little bit bigger. And I do this uh, little gateway thing because, you know, I, I want it to be... It's obviously got to be an enclosure, isn't it? So I want it to be natural on the inside, but with like a big perimeter fence on the outside. So... It'll make it look like that the dinosaurs inside have free roam in the entire area. But in reality, they don't. Because there'll be invisible fences all over to keep them penned in. But I do give the effect of it being like a nature trail. And I do the uh, all the pathway connecting it up. Making up individual enclosures for each species. And there are quite a lot of them. And I have the monorail going through. Because why the hell not? So yeah, you can see there I'm building the invisible fences around the pathway. Because obviously if I don't, then guests aren't going to come in yet, are they? Because they, they don't feel safe with dinosaurs free roaming. And I'll just constantly get like zero stars in this park because there'll be constant dinosaur threats. Even though all the dinosaurs in here are herbivores. Except for one, there is a carnivore in here, but it's the, um, I forgot the name, it's like the little squirrel one. I've Sinosauropteryx. I've... You'll see it later. That one. That one. Cynosauropteryx. <laughs> yes. The little squirrel dinosaur. Ah, oh, he's so cute and fluffy. And yeah, he go. There you go in the very teeny tiny enclosure that I've got for there. Other species I plan to. I uh, put in here. We got Homalocephale. Uh, Gallimimus, I think I put in here. And Margosaurus. Some of my uh, modded dinosaurs, so we have Gondwana Titan, which is one of my mods, and Nasutoceratops, we have Woohoosaurus, and Dracorex. Oh, and we have a buttload, buttload of powers as well, but not my modded powers. We have the uh, normal powers and some Lux ones as well, as you can see here. So where did I get this idea from? I actually got it from a... Just walking around. You know, these ideas just randomly come into my head. <laughs> so I, I, I go out for my daily walk. Because I like... You know, I do like... I do a bit of walk. I do like a bit of walking. And I walk across a canal. This can, a canal. And it just clicked into my head. For, oh, it would be a good idea if we had like a little nature trail for the guests. You know, they could see and interact with the dinosaurs. Obviously, you can't do that, but we can make it look like it. Just like I make this waterfall look convincing. 
No, Parrot, I'm arguing with you. Get out of the way. <laughs> and I use the snow effect to make it look a bit more watery. I think it has a nice little touch to it. I can't remember. The biggest pain in the ass I had was the uh, galleys, I think. No, it was the Aranosaurs I had the biggest problem with. I haven't put Aranosaurs in yet. Because I had to cha change, put them in a different area because the area I put them in at first wasn't big enough. Because those greedy buggers need lots of space. Which kind of mm, kind of caused me a problem because I wanted it, this area to be foresty and such, but Aranosaurus demands open space. <laughs> so it's not very foresty, is it? But I do find I did find a way around it. And a nice tip to know is that if you use uh, if you go into the decorations tab and you build like single trees from there, those trees do contribute to the forest count. That's a very good tip to know. And it doesn't and I believe it contribute like one tree contributes more to the forest count than like a radius of trees with the small circle radius thing I'm using now. That's a really interesting fact. And yeah, I, I, I add a bit of a bit of a terrain to it because I, I feel like if it's all flat, it doesn't look natural. But if you have like a bit of terrain height differences to it, I think it makes it look a bit more natural and a bit nicer. And yeah, you can the Aranosaurus is and yes, I know some of you may notice I have uh, some of some other mods, other dinosaurs that could have fit this area, like the chimpanzee. We're not building chimpanzees. This is not a freaking zoo. This is a uh, prehistoric zoo. So we can't have chimpanzees. <laughs> but Beelzebufa would have been a good fit here. The devil, the big, the froggy. But uh, I have another idea for that. And actually, I'll, I'll, I'll reveal my idea. Because it'll probably be in the next episode. So I'm going to build like a Spinosaur swamp. And I'm going to have, well, Spinosaurus in it. And and I'm gonna have a bunch of Beelzebufos running around. I think it will work. I'm I'll have to double check. I think Spinos can't attack the Beelzebufo. I know that small carnivores can hunt them, but the big carnivores I don't think attack them. And well, why, why would you want to attack Beelzebufo unless you're a French dinosaur and you like a bit of frog's legs? <laughs> and we all know Spinosaurus wasn't French. Actually, are there any French dinosaurs in this game? Now that I think about it. I think... I can't think off the top of my head. No, I don't think there is. So the Beelzebufos live to fight another day. But this isn't about Beelzebufo. This is about uh, this uh, nature trail. Um, you may also notice that I do change the traits of the dinosaurs so they're not so needy. It just makes building the enclosures a bit easier so they're not as demanding. And yeah, here's where I kind of think, well, what else could I put in here? And I decided to go with Wooosaurus. Add a bit of variety instead of just having Ceratopsids or more Hadrosaurs. And I build a couple of viewing platforms. So you can have like a nice big overview of the area. Although when doing the um, the uh, end lap, the uh, lap, the uh, little montage you see at the end of the, you'll see at the end of the video. I do regret using these viewing galleries because you have the big ugly chain link thing blocking the view which makes it look awful. So I wish I had changed the towers now. <laughs> never mind, say. Never mind. And uh, yeah, before I go on, I'd just, just like to say thanks for the um, support for the Amphacelus video. Because I wasn't really sure what to expect, what people would have made of it. But yeah, you guys seem to like it. So definitely going to keep going and definitely look for more. Look for more epic mon building montages of me building extratic ex, ex, extreme stuff better, better than, than anyone, anyone else. else maybe not <laughs> see my motto here is 
if you have doubts over what to build in a bit of space, just build a forest. You know, just build a forest. Mm. Oh, I finished my drink. Um, yeah, so the main, well, the big bulk of the trap, the actual Nate, the trail is actually finished. But I'm just dusting off the uh, outer side, outer rim of it. And I mainly, so this is just mainly me building lots of trees. <laughs> because I had no idea what to build on the outside. And I didn't want to go a bit too, I wanted to keep it as natural as possible. Let's just say that. So I didn't want to build big, big ass buildings just around the whole area. I want to keep it natural. So you can see here I'm using the hedges to go around as like a perimeter. And actually, now that I'm watching this, one thing I think I did forget to do was uh, fix the fence near the waterfalls because I used invisible fencing to go around the mountain. So it, I need to fix that so it look so it looks like the fence goes into the mountain and doesn't just stop abruptly outside. Otherwise, then it looks like the dinosaurs will just go whoop around the f around a fence and escape. See, so yeah, that's something I definitely will fix off camera. And we gotta build some, uh, gotta build some toilets because guests are very needy. <laughs> it's like, you, how many toilets do these guests need? Like seriously, you gotta build one for there, and then you gotta build one like five meters across. It's a toilet topia. And there are some floating trees, and I think I have missed a few, actually. I'm not sure why they were floating. Whether it was because I built them above the invisible fence, or whatever, I'm not really sure. And like I like, like to seem to do in this park, I got a fence off the path to make it look nice. Right, now it's time to build, like, a uh, eating area, just outside. And, I might pro and I'll probably end up building one on the other side as well. But for now, we'll stick with one side. Um, I also did get a really nice suggestion from someone in the comment section. I can't remember who you are, but thanks for the lovely suggestion. And they suggested that I build like an Avery themed park. That's something we can definitely do. Um, I'll probably have to snag some more pterosaur species off the Nexus. And it'll most likely be a small park, but that's definitely something we can do. I'll have to be inventive with it, but I'm sure I can uh, come up with some interesting ideas. Actually, now that I think off the top of my head, what I would like to do is build like a big Avery dome and then build it like a pyramid. I don't know if that's going to be doable though, because it might, I don't know if that's going to work the way I hope, but maybe that's something we can try in the future. But for now, we're building our amenities, and yeah, I like to stick with a consistent theme when I'm built when building amenities in like a specific area. Of course, I'll change I'll change it throughout the park, so it won't be the exact same default buildings throughout the entire park. There will be variations, but for like these three, I like to keep the same same architecture, as they say, in the business. Actually, I will mention. Oh yeah, <laughs> just don't ask what I was doing here. This is called trying to fill up space because I like every area to be filled with something. Otherwise, it's just a waste of space, isn't it? So. Don't ask me what I was building here. Just don't. I like to think of it as like a greenhouse for like growing stuff to feed the herbivores. Maybe that's maybe that's what I was thinking. I don't know. I might have been high on something when I was building this thing. <laughs> no, it's this cool little trick here. Build the uh, shelters as the entrance. I think that's a cool little trick. So it looks like you go, you can go in there. That's the power of modern. <laughs> ben and... Oh, excuse me. Well, I just, I just had a uh, Pepsi, so <laughs> might be a bit windy, as they say. 
I'm not really sure what I'm going to build in this area, to be honest. So for now, I've just built like a forest. Now, I'll say, <laughs> keep it natural, as I said. But I'll probably build the dinosaur enclosure if I do run out of space. But I doubt that's going to be the case. Or maybe I could build a fun zone section or something. I, I, I don't know. I'll just build a forest for now. <laughs> right now, for pretty much the uh, most interesting bit of the time lapse. Me, me putting, putting down, down lots, lots of fountains, fountains and, and lampposts. I, I, I feel like I'm using these a lot. These biosyn fountains. I don't know, there's just something about them that I just like. And yet, yeah, as you can see here, I am a bit inaccurate with the placement of these fountains, and I'm still inaccurate. <laughs> oh dear, so if, if you're an OCD person, thankfully I'm not, and yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry you had to see that. Right, now for the funnest part of the time lapse. Me putting down a bunch of flagpoles. And that will end this time lapse here. So, hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoy the montage that will come after I place down all these lights and banners. Leave a like and subscribe if you feel like it. And until next time, ta-ta!